Right, hi there, good morning. Uh, good morning, Lola, Lisa, and Hunter. Uh, welcome to your own special science lesson. Um, I thought I'd record this for you because I know you've been working incredibly hard at home, and I'm sorry if I missed you out from the last videos. I just didn't know what was going on at home. So I thought I would start with a quick recap of what we've done in science, and then we'll get everything all together in one lesson. So um, in science, we've looked at light sources. So a light source is something that creates light. So we've got something like this, which is a little torch. You can see the light. Sorry about that. OK, and you can see it creates light. And how this works is there's a battery in here. There's a filament inside or an LED light. The battery using electricity heats up heats up the LED in the front and that creates light. So that's a light source. Uh, this one is human made. Then we've got a different type of light source. Sorry, I don't actually have a lighter at home. Um, uh, this is a candle and I'd light the fire on top, like on a birthday candle, and this would also be a light source. Now this one's a strange one. We don't know if it's natural, so it's naturally occurring, or if it is mad, human made. So I think it's probably a bit of both. So I was thinking what we could do today is you could create your own little sheet, which is what most people have been doing, and create a sheet for different types of light sources. So it would look like this. You've got a Venn diagram. So ignore this bit at the top just for a second. We'll go back to that bit. So this is called a Venn diagram for light sources. So here we'd have natural and then human made. And then the middle would have things that we're not sure about or that we think might be a bit of both, okay? And then on the outside, we'd have things that aren't light sources, okay? And we'll talk about a few of those in a second. So for natural light sources, the one big one up in the sky we'd think about is put the sun in there. And then human made, Nice and easy. We'd think about a light bulb. And then, as I said, something like the candle, maybe we'd put that in the middle because we don't quite know if it's just human made or natural because fire is naturally occurring, but we make the fire to put it on top of the candle, and humans have made the candle. So, arguably, you could say that it's natural, human made, or a bit of both. And then on the outside, there are things that we think make light, but don't. Now, what they actually do is they reflect. So in here, I've got a, a Prince CD. And if I open it up, you can see it looks like it's making light. But then when I put it this way, there's no light. And then when I tip it, there. So you can see, now what you can also see is to me. So, and if I show you the torch, you aren't seeing two of me, you're just seeing light. Whereas with the CD, you're seeing two of me. So this is a reflective surface. So it's not making light, it's not a light source. It's using the light that's coming in through my window, which is back there and it's reflecting the light back. And I can show you that if I put the torch on it, you can see it becomes really, really bright. And it acts a little bit like something in the sky that only reflects and doesn't create light. And you can come onto that thing. So that's the first thing. So I think that's quite a quick, easy lesson to get on with. You can draw a Venn diagram, two circles, have the middle section and come up with as many light sources as you can. So there are lots of naturally occurring ones that happen in the sky and there are lots of human made ones in your house. I can guarantee you there's at least five or six of them in your house and then there might be a couple that you can think of in the middle, especially one that links to the stone age that was really really important and then maybe you could put a couple of things on the outside. So that's something really really easy you can make on a plain bit of paper. Then our second lesson Lola, was all about scientific language and technical language. So I'm going to run through three words that are really, really important for our science topic on light. Okay, so bear with me a second. I'm just going to share the screen.
I'm going to go into this one. And we're going to share. And hopefully you'll still see me pop up in the corner. Then we're going to go to this. So we are looking at three words. The first one is transparent, which you may have heard of before. Then we've got translucent, and then we've got opaque, okay? And all three of these are connected to light in the following way. So transparent, pause me now, I think you probably know, Lola, what transparent is, so just whisper to mum and tell her what you think transparent means. Okay, let's have a go. So we've got transparent. So if an object is transparent, it means light goes completely through it. All right, so my glasses, as you can see, there's a picture of glasses there. Glasses are transparent. And if I shine my light through it, you can see that it's actually wiggling through, straight through the glass. In fact, mine need a little bit of a clean. So transparent is something that lets light through, okay? So um, in your house, you've got a window, that's transparent, we can see through it. That means light is going all the way through it. Okay, not all of the light, some of it does get blocked, but most of it comes through. So that's transparent. The second word is translucent. Now translucent means that some of the light gets through, not all of it, and sometimes it gets scattered by whatever translucent object it's going through. So this candle is actually quite a good example because the glass isn't transparent, it's frosted. And frosted glass is translucent. So it means it lets some of the light through, but not all of it. I don't think this is a particularly one, good one to show you, but you might be able to see some of the light getting through and some of it's getting stopped. Then the other word we've got is opaque. Now opaque means no light gets through at all, okay? And so opaque would be, you think like a, a wall is opaque, okay? Because no light's getting through it. If you're standing in your bedroom, light's coming through the window, but it's not coming through the wall, even on a bright sunny day, is it? So opaque, and then hopefully your curtains might be opaque as well, so that you can get a good night's sleep. So we've got transparent, translucent and opaque. So these are our three words we're looking for. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna create your own worksheet again, and it's gonna look a little bit like this one up here. So on my one up here, I've written transparent, I've written translucent, and I've written opaque. So those are my three things. So I might just to remind myself, I might write, so this one's transparent, so I'm just gonna write, let's, light through and then for translucent I'm going to say let's some light through and if you want to be really fancy you could write and some light gets scattered which is really quite an interesting concept and then we've got opaque and then we get blocks light okay and then what we're going to do is you're going to go on a little hunt around your house to try and find an object that is transparent, maybe two or three, some translucent ones and some opaque ones, okay? And then you can just write them in or draw pictures. So if I go back to my CD case here, now this one, I'm going to put light against it. You don't need a torch to do this, but if you've got one, your mum's um, smartphone will probably have a torch and you can use that and it's a great way of testing things. So you can see this now. Can you see any light hitting the back of that? No. So this is opaque. So I've got CD cover is opaque. So I'm gonna write CD case. So that's one opaque object. Then the next thing I have is, uh, this is called a reed diffuser, I think. Um, my wife likes these. This one doesn't have anything in it at the moment. Now, I can see the sticks on the inside. And I can see all the way through it, and I can see my hand. And if I shine a light through it, hopefully you can see on my whiteboard behind me that the light is traveling all the way through it and hitting there. So this, say it's a glass reed diffuser, I think that's what it's called. Um, I just might say glass jar. Uh, and so that's transparent. So we've got glass jar. And then something translucent. Now these can be tricky. Um, 
But I thought a really good one is I've got my wife's sunglasses here. Let's put them over the top. There we go. Nice. Um, now, these are not letting all of the light through. And that's because they're used to protect our eyes when it's really, really sunny. So this on the outside is a black covering on the outside and it's making them translucent because it's stopping not all of the light, it's letting some light through, but not all of the light. So you might be able to see that, I don't know if you can, that it's really, really bright. And then when I change it and shine it just through there, it's not as bright. So it's obviously taking some of the light away. So the sunglasses are translucent. Okay, so sun glasses. Okay, so that's the second thing I'd like you to do. So the first thing is to create a Venn diagram of light sources. And then the second thing is to do a bit of a transparent, translucent, opaque hunt. Okay, so as you can see, I've managed to just create my own worksheet just with a couple of lines and a couple of circles. And then you could do it like that and you can send it to me. Mummy's got my email address or you can send it to Mrs. Higginson and she'll just forward it on to me. Okay, and I'll have a look at it then. All right. Um, I hope you have a lovely day. Keep safe and um, we miss you all. All right. Bye bye.